My name is Melina Abdullah, M-E-L-I-N-A, last name is A, B as in boy, D as in David, U-L-L-A-H, and I'm uh, an original member and co-founder of Black Lives Matter Grassroots. I'll be serving as your moderator. Um, today we're here just a few days after another secret grand jury refused to prosecute Shane Privet for the murder of Jalen Randall. We're still demanding justice. We're standing with Jalen's family. What we'll have happening um, this morning is we're beginning with a conversation with his family and then we'll engage in protest. We have families who are justice families from all over the country, from Minneapolis to Florida to right here in Houston. We have organizers who are here from Houston to Los Angeles to Mississippi, all standing here demanding justice in the name of Jalen Randall. We know we can't get justice for Jalen Randall. Justice for Jalen Randall would mean that he was still here to raise his daughter, to be loved on by his parents, to be um, a comrade and friend and brother to his siblings. Um, we know that that's what justice for Jalen Randall would be, but we're struggling for justice in Jalen Randall's name. And so we'll begin by introducing Tiffany Rochelle. Nobody can advocate for justice in someone's name like a praying mother. And so we'll ask her to come up with her pastor first, um, offering just a little bit of prayer, and then the next words you'll hear will be from Tiffany Rochelle. I'm Timothy Chris, we're pastor of Fifth Ward Baptist Church, our pastor, the family. Let us go into prayer now. God, our Father, how even now we thank you and we praise you in advance, God. We trust you even in the, the darkest hour, Lord God, that you are able to turn this situation around. Even though, God, it was a no bill, I still believe that you are greater than what any man can say. So give us the strength to fight. Give us the strength to stand for what's right. Give us the strength not to be a coward. And with you, all things are possible. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello, my name is Tiffany Rochelle. I am the mother of Jalen Randall. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and whoever believes in him shall have everlasting life. My son Jalen Javon Randall was taken by the hands of officer Shane Privet. Jalen's souls now rest with God and his spirit will continue to live with us. The fight for his justice and the reform of our system continues. The Houston Police Department, DA Kim R. Office, and Mayor Sylvester Turner Lee have not yet taken accountability or provided transparency in addressing an officer who poses a liability to our city and to our communities. Chief Finner, your statement that my son's death will not be in vain was very accurate. His tragic passing should serve as a catalyst for change within the unjust system. We must eliminate secret juries, establish a centralized database for body camera footage accessible to both police department and legal representatives and ensure that any officer involved in a shooting or misconduct is suspended without pay until a court supervised investigation is concluded. They should also be prohibited from working for a law enforcement agency during this period. The DA department should not submit evidence to a grand jury as it presents a conflict of interest when they are all under the same umbrella. We must end qualified immunity and create laws to protect the people from police misconduct. It is crucial to hold the police accountable for their actions. God not, does not sleep. He sees all and his, his time, the truth will reveal. Today we demand that the officer Shane Privet be released immediately from his duties. Criminal charges must be filed by DA Kim R. And we call 
for an end of use of secret grand juries. These actions will satisfy the people and bring them closer to justice. We need y'all help to make this happen. We need everybody's help because it's unfair, it's unjust. Justice for Jalen Randall. Justice for Jalen Randall. Justice for Jalen Randall. Justice for Jalen Randall. No justice. No justice. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. Thank you. Next, we'll have Jalen's father, Mr. Warren Randall. Um, uh, my name's Warren Randall, W A R R E N. Um, I normally don't write things down, but I wanted to immortalize my emotions and the way I feel at this moment forever. I want to remember the anguish, the pain, the desperation, and most of all, the betrayal of an unjust system. In this country, we are supposed to be part of the fabric of this great country, but instead, we are the rug that politicians, government, and law enforcement walk on. We are the rugs that dreams, aspirations, rep reparations, and most of all, justice is swept under. Once again, another egregious act has happened against another young black man. This time, it just so happened to be my son. In America, minorities are judged and scrutinized by their past indiscretions. Law enforcement, on the, on the other hand, their indiscretions and poor behavior are overlooked. The only difference is when they make bad decisions or bad choices, individuals can't lose their lives. Once again, Shane Privet got away with assaulting and also this time murdering another young black man. We will ever be the rug that this country walks on until every citizen of this country has equal justice. Justice for Jalen Randall. Thank you. Justice for Jalen Randall. Black lives are going to fuck Next up, we'll have Deanna Hardy Joseph, the mother of Andrew Joseph III, as well as other Justice families who will give a statement of solidarity. Hey, don't me. My name is Deanna Joseph, D E A N N A J O S E P H. And as Justice families like mine, when my 14-year-old son was killed in Tampa, Florida, I had to use the pain that I felt to the injustice that stole my son. I had to use that pain to fuel my purpose, like these families that are standing next to me, like the sister of Dante Wright, okay, like the mother of Evan Lee. We had to use what we knew as mothers, as family members of those stolen, to be able to fight a system of injustice that we knew was against us. In this system, you see, they don't give you anything much other than the bleeding heart of I'm sorry, or my condolences go to you as the family. You see, they don't give you much as it relates to evidence and information on discovery. They don't give you much as far as it relates to what happened to your child. You see, closure for us comes hard. It comes by us having to do our own work. It comes by us having to advocate for our own children's rights, for our own loved ones' rights to be able to get some semblance of accountability. And it's disheartening that this family, again, after pleading with the community, after having the ability to give you evidence and give you witnesses who was with Jalen at the time he was killed, who told their stories and explained to you in black and white in their own words what happened on that night, who told you of the injustice that they had suffered, who came to you with the evidence, who came to you with the raw emotions, who came with you and told you that this was not right and have been denied repeatedly, even through a secret grand jury, to know what information would transpire. You see, this is not right. This is a system where enough is enough. 
And we as justice families all around the world have come together and say, this system of injustice will not be tolerated by any and none of us. Because what happened to us on the day in which our children were killed could possibly happen to you. You see, we can't help this brown skin that we in. We didn't choose that skin, but somehow we, we believe that we are deserving of justice. You know, we love our children just like you love your children. And we understand that justice was supposed to be for all of us. But why is it being denied to a certain few groups of people, such as myself and others like me? You see, the secret grand jury has to end. We need the community to stand with the family of Jail and Randall. We need you to understand that in your regular life you think these things work, but they don't. Everything you ever believed about this system and thinking that if it ever if you ever needed it, it would work for you. It doesn't. It doesn't. Your whole life has been turned around by something that you once called justice and accountability, just to know that justice and accountability does not exist. But it needs to exist. And we need our voices to be heard, not just on this street corner, but all over the world. That we want accountability for the death of our children. It is our blood that's on the ground. It is our children who have been crying from the grave saying, Mama and Daddy, fight for me. It is our blood that is on the ground saying, I will not let my labor be in vain. You see, what Jalen's mother and father don't know at this point is, this is a lifelong sentence that they're serving. A sentence they did not ask for. But it's a sentence that was ordained and given to them. And at this point in time in America's history, we need to change the trajectory. And we need to demand and say no more. Justice for Jalen Randall. Justice for Jalen Randall. I said justice for Jalen Randall. Justice for Jalen Randall. I said justice for Jalen Randall. Justice for Jalen Randall. Next, we have Attorney Ben Crump. Thank you, Melina. And I stand here with Tiffany and Warren, brokenhearted parents who are still grieving the loss of their son who was killed unjustly. And you don't have to take our word for it. Look at the video. There's just no justifying why this officer will shoot when our warrant son is running away from them. Jalen is running away. He never puts him in harm's way. You don't have to take our word. Look at the video. That's why we're calling for the Department of Justice to investigate this matter because we think that it was a miscarriage of justice. The officer still working after he killed this young black man who posed no threat to him is an injustice. And so we're here saying this is not the end of this. This won't be swept under the rug. Tiffany and Warren have vowed to fight until their very last breath to get justice for their son. You know, I, I can never thank Dr. Melena Abdullah enough for going all across the country, standing with families, when everybody tells them that what happened to your child is legal. Well, we say just because they try to tell us it's legal, that doesn't make it right. And we're going to contend you to stand for what is right. It was the right thing for Warren and Tiffany's son to be able to live. It was the wrong thing for an officer to shoot him running away from them. And what did he say, uh, Warren? He Ooh, knew oh, he shit. made a mistake. Oh, oh, shit. But yet, they're trying to wash all the blood off his hands. And we refuse to allow them to 
justify this unjustifiable act. And I know, I know that Tiffany and Warren are devastated because the video is clear. Imagine if that's your child. It could be any of our children. I mean, in less than a few seconds, the officer makes a decision to shoot and kill based on somebody trying to get away from him, not posing any threat to him. And when you look at this officer's history, you, you, you scratch your head and say, is this really what Houston Police Department want to put out front to say this is the best we got, this is the finest? Somebody who broke a young black man's jaw, used excessive force, and now he's killed another young black man? Is this really what you're going to tell this family, tell this community? We can do better, Houston. And Jalen Randall's life is going to be a constant reminder that we must do better. And anybody who want to know why we're here, all they got to do is look at the video. Say no more, just watch the video. Say no more, just watch the video. Say no more. Say no more, just watch the video. Say no more, just watch the video. Say no more, just watch the video. You're absolutely right. Just open your eyes and you'll see why we are here fighting yet again for justice for Jalen Randall. 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 Randall. The leader, are we ready for the parents to speak? Say his name! Jalen Randall! 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 Put some respect on him! Bow, bow, bow! Put some respect on him! Bow, bow, bow! Put some respect on him! Bow, bow, bow! So we're grateful um, to have an attorney who's also an advocate, not just in the courtroom, but in the streets. Grateful that Ben Crump flew out here to stand with the family and is doing work again to advance justice, not just in the courtroom, but also all across this country. Um, we know that as people come in and stand with the family, there are organizers in Houston who have been holding it down. Yes, We're grateful for it to Kanda Joseph, who's going to come up and offer just brief remarks um, from BLM HD. Who's got the power? We got the power. Who's got the power? We got the power. Who's got the power? We got the power. Power up. Break down. Who? You know, um, in 2014, Jordan Baker was killed by Houston police. And when they went to trial, the justice of the court the justice of the court, not Janet Baker, his mother, not, not the people who were supporting, not the family, but in the court of law said that the city of Houston is complicit. Yes. Said that the city of Houston has a history, a practice of being complicit. Um, it is time for the city of Houston to shift the way that it has been treating the people after the people that they hire, that we hire with our tax dollars takes the lives of our family members. We don't want to stand out here another time. That's we right. don't want to have to have another protest, another family crying, people asking y'all, telling folks we matter. We know we matter. We know our lives matter. We are asking the mayor, current mayor, and all of y'all who are waiting to be elected. In November, there's a lot of things happening. We got people texting our phones, saying, will you vote for me? We have people saying, support us. Houston has a black, a black political elites 
system, we got people representing us from the right to the left. We are asking you, we are calling you, we want to know why aren't you here? Why aren't you in the back warring on the behalf of this family? Um, the last thing I want to say, because I don't have a lot to say, is that we will not stop. We will not quit until Jalen Randall's life, it is known that Jalen Randall's life meant something and changed what, what's happening in the city of Houston. Thank you. Thank you. No justice, no, no peace. peace. No justice, no, no peace. peace. No justice, no, no peace. peace. Next we have Seth Usman of Democratic Socialists of America. Hello, my name is Seth Usman. I'm a member of the Houston Democratic Socialists of America and chair of our abolition working group. We've been supporting the Randall family since Jalen's death at the end of April. We've been with them at every protest downtown at City Hall month after month since his murder in 2022. I just want to say a couple of brief things. Number one, that if the Houston political class had any shame whatsoever last week, they all would have resigned the moment the verdict came out. Because this verdict happened in George Floyd's hometown. And the entire Houston political class claimed that they were on the side of the protesters in 2020. They've revealed them that to be a lie every single day since Jalen's murder. They've had nothing to say to the family. They've never rallied behind the family. What has been clear is that we are fighting a system. And that is the biggest reason why this campaign has to continue and why we need to think really seriously and savvily about what justice means. Because Jalen's death was not an accident. And I don't just mean the fact that the video has Shane Privet saying he ain't going to live to leave this neighborhood. I'm also talking about the fact that in 2022, the same year that Jalen was murdered, over 1,180 people were also murdered by the police. Two years after the BLM uprising, this was the highest recorded event of police murder recorded in U.S. history. The highest number. We're fighting a system. We're fighting a system that constantly puts people second to police property and profit. We live in a system and in a society in which we don't really have cities. We have glorified police departments with large civil administrations. In the city of Houston, we're not allowed to feed the homeless because we get thrown in jail and the homeless population rises. Our schools are being sold to the highest bidder and being turned into testing factories to, to help the rich in this city. And health care, forget about it. You don't get health care in this society. It's very clear that the only quote unquote social service that the ruling class in this society cares about is police departments, which are the sharpest symbol of white supremacy in this society. We need to be very clear that this campaign continues and that we continue the legacy of the George Floyd uprising. That was about fighting for justice, it was about fighting against racism, and it was fighting for a different kind of society in which people come before police, come before property, and come before profit. Thank you. And then finally, we have Jalen's brother, Blake Rochelle, to offer our demands because we have very clear demands. Whose house? Our house. Whose house? Our house. In the name of Jalen Randall, we are demanding one, HPD fires Shane Prevent, two, the district attorney's office files criminal charges against Shane Prevent. Three, the U.S. Department of Justice file, uh, pre files federal charges on Shane Prevent. And four, we need to end secret grand juries in, in Texas and across the nation. Thank you. Who's got the power? We got the power. Who's got the power? We got the power. Who's got the power? We got the power. So again, we're going to continue to fight, going to continue to struggle in the name of Jalen Randall to close us out with our pledge to continue to fight is the father of Andrew Joseph III, Andrew Joseph Jr. Thank you. There's no feeling in the world like having to go to the graveyard to visit your child. The human body was not set up for it. We gather here today in the name of Jalen Randall, 
hoping that it's the last. But numbers tell us it probably won't be. You see, because the biggest problem in this world today is racism that nobody wants to address. Jalen Randall was killed because he was black. If Jalen Randall was white, we wouldn't be standing here today. And it don't matter what category you think of, black people is dead legs. By design. And everything that we get, we have to fight for. Everything that we get, we have to fight for. So this is nothing new. We had to fight to sit in the front of the bus. We had to fight to drink out of the water fountain. We had to fight to swim in the pool. We had to fight to catch the train. We had to fight to be buried in the same graveyard as you. This is no new fight. And this is a fight that we will overcome. Because today we're burying seeds for a better world tomorrow. A world that does not consist of qualified immunity. A world that does not exist of secret grand juries. A world where police are no longer on traffic stops. A world where police don't respond to domestic violence and to mental health illness. A world where our kids can go to school with our resource officers giving them charges before they graduate. And this is the work that we're doing today. Who got the power? We got the power. Who got the power? We got the power. Who got the power? We got the power. Show them what the power look like. Power up! It's for your people. Break down! Power up! Break down! Power up! Two times, break down. Same thing. Same thing. Same thing. Same thing. Same thing. Do we have any questions as we close out? Questions for any of Just for the family, have you all, since the decision, have you had any conversations with the DA's office or with HPD about some of the things that you're calling for? And if so, what kind of response did you receive from them? No, we haven't received anything. They have not called. Uh, Throughout the process, I have been going back and forth with Kimberly Clark. Uh, after the verdict was read on uh, Wednesday, no one called, no one said anything, so no, they have not. And on the civil side of the case, where do things stand with the, the lawsuit currently? That's a conflict. Okay, I'll ask you. Uh, Mr. Crump, just wonder if you could update us on the civil lawsuit and where things stand in that case. We filed the lawsuit, everything was stayed because of criminal proceedings. Hopefully we can move aggressively on the case now that this grand jury decision has been rendered. We understand that the Department of Justice come in as we expect them to do in the criminal investigation. They always like to proceed with the criminal ahead of the civil. But we think that the uh, Tiffany and Warren deserve full justice for Jalen around and not just partial justice. They deserve a criminal conviction and they deserve civil accountability. And just briefly to follow up, have you heard from the Department of Justice since the grand jury decision? Well, the great Department of Justice, as you all are aware, are looking at a pattern in practice into the prison, uh, should say, the death and custody that keep happening in the Harris County Jail. We want them to not only look at what's happening with the Houston Police Department, but we want them to specifically look at this video of the unjustified shooting and killing of Jalen Randall. And so we're in communications with the Department of Justice. Justice for Jalen Randall. Justice for Jalen Randall.